Okay, another little video here to uh, talk about solving problems, momentum problems, that uh, involve collisions. So uh, we found in our lab, uh, we had two carts, two objects colliding with each other, and uh, we looked at how their momentums of the two carts changed as a result of their colliding. And what we found was that if one of the carts, call it cart A, if its momentum changed, that was equal to the opposite of the change in momentum of cart B. And so basically what happens is when the two carts collide, one gains momentum and the other loses it. And this is true not just of carts and labs, but it's true of all objects. Their changes in momentum are opposite. Now we know that change in momentum is given as the mass of the object times its change of velocity. And we also know that change of velocity is final velocity minus initial velocity, so we could say that this was mass times v minus v naught, where v is the final velocity of the object and uh, v naught it was its initial velocity. And so when we're solving problems with collisions, we can set this up using this idea. So we could say that the change in momentum of cart A is equal to minus the change in momentum of cart B. And what this would tell us is that the mass of cart A times the final velocity of cart A minus the initial velocity of cart A is going to equal the opposite of the mass of cart B times the final velocity of cart B minus the initial velocity of cart B. And so this equation right here we can use to solve most collision problems. Um, of course we have to know something about their masses and their initial and final velocities. And we can find the things that we don't know. So let's take a look at how to apply this with an ela inelastic collision, one where they stick together. So let's suppose we have two objects. I'm just going to use blocks here. And one of them has got a mass of, oh, let's say, 5 kilograms. And it is moving to the right with a velocity of 3 meters per second. So it's going to collide with another uh, block that has a mass of 1 kilogram and its velocity is 0 meters per second. And they're sliding across like a frictionless surface. And um, we're going to say that they stick together, and so we have an inelastic collision. So we can set this up to find what the final velocity, so what is the final velocity? So that's V naught, I should say. What is V? Now, because they're stuck together, that final velocity is going to be the same for both carts. So, with the idea that the change in momentum of cart A is going to equal the opposite of the change in momentum of cart B. Um, so, we could set it up this way. We could say the mass of A times the final velocity, and I'm not going to say velocity of A because I know it's the same as it is for B, but the initial velocity of A is equal to minus the mass of B times the velocity of B at the end, same as card A, or block A, minus the initial velocity of B. Okay? So if I substitute some numbers in, um, I can solve this for V. So what I've got here is 5 kilograms times V minus 3 meters per second. Now even though V is in the positive direction, it's minus that positive value. And this is equal to minus 1 kilogram times V minus, and the initial velocity of block B is 0, so 0 meters per second. So we do a little bit of algebra. And so if I just multiply this out, I get 5 kilograms times V 
minus 15 kilogram meters per second on the left side. On the right side, it's negative 1 kilogram times V. plus zero, since one kilogram times zero is zero. So we want to, you wonder why if it's one kilogram times V, why do we have to do that? We want to keep that, that unit, the kilogram, in there, as well as the negative sign. Okay, so now I'm just going to add this to both sides, and I get five, oops, five kilogram times V plus I add this to both sides, 1 kilogram times V, and I still have minus 15 kilogram meters per second, and now that equals 0. So now I'm going to combine these together, and I'm going to add this to both sides, so I get 6 kilogram meters per second is equal to, add 15 to both sides, 15, I'm sorry, this is wrong, 6 kilograms times V, and it's 15 kilogram meters per second. I make mistakes too. And then to solve for V, I just divide both sides by 6 kilograms. So V is equal to 15 kilogram meters per second divided by 6 kilograms. And so this equals, got the calculator out, 15 divided by 6. It's 2.5, 2.5, notice that the kilograms divide out, and I'm left with meters per second. So that is the velocity of the combined masses. So one thing to keep in mind to notice is that that's a positive number, which tells us that it's still moving to the right, which is something that we would have expected. Um, I want to show you another way to solve this problem, which is equivalent, uh, and that is based on the fact that since the momentums of the two carts, one goes up the same as the other goes down, is the total momentum between the two of them doesn't change. And so the system momentum stays constant in this kind of a situation where there aren't any forces acting from the outside. So I could write that by saying the initial momentum is equal to the final momentum. Right? So if I look at initially, this cart, the one kilogram cart, doesn't have any momentum since it's not moving, but the five kilogram cart is moving, so it does, and it has all of the momentum of the system. So that would be five kilograms times three meters per second. Remember that momentum is mass times velocity, plus zero, because this one's not moving. If it was, we could do the same thing. And that's going to equal to the combined masses, which would be the mass of A plus the mass of B, times that final velocity. Because now it's acting like one object. So here we have 15 kilogram meters per second plus zero is equal to MA plus MB is 5 kilograms times plus 1 kilogram is 6 kilograms times V, and then I just divide both sides by 6 kilograms, and I get 15 kilogram meters per second over 6 kilograms, and again the kilograms divide out. In fact, this is the same expression I had right here, and it gives, of course, the same answer, 5 meters per second. So there's two ways to approach this problem. You can choose whichever you like. Um, one is based upon the fact that the impulses are opposites, the change in momentum are opposites, and I write it out this way. And the other is recognizing that the momentum of the system doesn't change when there's a collision between these two objects. And so I write out the momentum before and after and solve for V. Uh, personally, I like this way better because it's a little bit quicker and easier to deal with. So, next we'll take a look at an elastic collision. So we have 5 kilograms times V, so 5 kilograms times V, minus 3 times 5 is 15 kilogram meters per second, 
and this is equal to 1 kilogram times V. Now that might seem like, why do I have to put that 1 kilogram there? But the units are important there. And then 1 kilogram times 0 is just 0. So what I can see now is I have V in two, um, two terms. And so um, I want to get these both on the same side, and then I'm going to add 15 kilograms to both sides. So if I subtract, <coughs> excuse me, if I subtract one kilogram times V from both sides, I get five kilograms times V minus one kilogram times V minus 15 kilogram meters per second is equal to zero. So I'm going to add the 15 kilogram meters per second to both sides and subtract the one kilogram times V from the five kilograms times V. So I get four kilograms times V, it's five minus one, is equal to, and if I add 15 to both sides, 15 kilogram meters per second. So to find V at this point, all I have to do is divide both sides by four kilograms. So I get V is equal to 15 kilogram meters per second divided by four kilograms. And so then all I have to do is divide 15 divided by four and I get 3.75 3.75 and notice that the kilograms are going to divide out and I'm left with meters per second. So that is the final velocity of both of the carts when they're stuck together. So another way I could have done this, and I could have set it up a little bit differently, so I'll go ahead and do that, just to show you a different way to get at the same answer. The fact that the momentums, uh, the momentum change of each object in the system is opposite, means that the momentum of this total system does not change, right? So I could say P initial is equal to P final. So that's the same momentum that I started with before as what I started with afterwards. And if I look at this situation, I notice the one kilogram block doesn't have any momentum in the beginning, but the five kilogram block does. So I could say that the initial momentum of the system is five kilograms times three meters per second plus zero because this block does not have any momentum afterwards or beforehand. And afterwards, it's going to be the momentum of the system still is the masses of both blocks that are stuck together, they're moving. And so if I just add the masses together and multiply that by V. And so three times five is 15 kilogram meters per second. And that's the momentum of the system. And this is going to equal three kilo, or five kilograms plus one kilogram is six kilograms times V. And I'm going to have a problem here, aren't I? 